let's first talk about how to connect to a database and then we'll worry about actually using it. So let's go ahead and create a database folder and let's create a new file called Riot Mongo Clients. There are actually multiple ways to connect to a MongoDB in uh, Node.js. You'll probably see something called Mongoose as well as MongoDB. Uh, Mongoose is something for structured data. So if I know that there's always going to be a username and a uh, ID and a password or other things, if I know that this structure is always going to be the same, I can set up a schema for it and map it to my database using Mongoose. However, if you're using a third party and you're consuming data from a third party, you probably don't have as much guarantee that this structure is never going to change. And so I would recommend using MongoDB or the Mongo client uh, because you don't have as ownership over the schema. And so it's probably not a good idea to lock yourself into a concrete schema. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a Mongo client explicitly to the Riot DB. We're gonna to wanna to first install MongoDB, and we're gonna go into our riot underscore Mongo client, and we're gonna just create a Mongo client from require MongoDB dot Mongo clients. We're gonna define a database up here at the top of the class. We're gonna kind of create a singleton-ish uh, pattern. What that means is if anyone were to try to request a database from this class, it's gonna get this database object, and it's only gonna to connect to it once. What we don't wanna do is we don't want to have to, every single time you make a change to a file or a record in the database, we don't wanna to have to reconnect to the database every single time because we're only connected to one from one location and we're only uh, writing from one location. We really shouldn't have to connect more than once. We can just connect it once and keep that connection going for the length of our project. So we're gonna create an asynchronous function called getDB. For the first time someone tries to connect to the database, it'll actually make that connection happen. But every time afterwards, it's just gonna return this database connection object. That's what this let DB is. So what this is gonna do is we're gonna take the client and we're gonna define it as uh, await mongo client dot connect and we're probably going to going to want to connect to an environment variable if you've got mongodb installed and it's running so if you go to your services and you've got mongodb running as one of your services here mine's currently running you likely have it at local host um, if I open up my MongoDB community, which should come with that MongoDB community package if, that you thought I recommended you download in our first video so you see this connection string right here. It's just MongoDB localhost 27, et cetera. I'm gonna put it here for now. And then right after we get this functioning, I'll move it to environment variables. There's an additional thing we were gonna to wanna to include in here on our MongoDB options. It's called use unified topology. What this is is an opt-in functionality. We're essentially saying, yes, MongoDB, I wanna use the new feature you're allowing. If you don't say this, it'll use the old version of MongoDB and it's deprecated, so it'll give you a little bit of a warning. It's not gonna break, but if you type use unified topology, you're not gonna get that error in your um, terminal and it's not gonna be a problem. It's not gonna affect anything that we're gonna be doing today. But now that we've got this Mongo client connected, we want to go ahead and connect to the database. We wanted to find the database connection explicitly. So this returns a client it doesn't return a connection to database. I actually have to call db equals client dot db and then riot. And the reason I'm calling this database riot is because it's the database where we're going to cache the response that riot gives us. So we don't have to keep going back to riot for that data. If this fails, we're probably gonna wanna catch it. So something important to note is await, something like this is an asynchronous method. This should probably be done. The await is not making it. The, the await is synchronous. It's turning an asynchronous method into synchronous. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to put a try around it because if it fails, uh, it, there's going to be something that needs to happen in case we have that failure. We need to catch it. So we're going to say catch error. And I am lazy. And personally, if it fails, the rest of the code shouldn't run. So we're just going to rethrow the error. But if we don't catch it here, it'll cause a little bit more of a headache for us. And it's actually probably gonna yell at us for not having a try catch around it. Then we're gonna return DB. So I want you to kind of understand the way that this code works. What we're saying is if database is not defined, we're going to connect to the MongoDB. Then we're going to define the database as the database on that connection of Riot. And then we're gonna return database. So here we've defined it. If database was already defined, then we don't need to do any of this code and we can just return it directly. This is why it's sort of a singleton pattern in the sense that we're only letting you get to the database through one class, but we're not really doing that. It's asynchronous, so technically you can run this multiple times and it gets a little bit funkier, but the idea behind it is the same. So we now have a DB object that allows us to actually cache this data to a database.
get summoner by name gets this data from Riot. We probably don't want to call it from Riot if we've already called it in say, let's say the last 24 hours. So let's get the database connection. Let's go ahead and let's define a yesterday date. What this is going to do is I said before, if the data has been in the database for less than 24 hours, we don't need to fetch it from Riot again. Basically, if I've looked at my user within the past day, don't waste my time, don't look at Riot. Let's just pull it straight from the database. Let's go ahead and let's define a yesterday date. What this is gonna do is, I said before, if the data has been in the database for less than 24 hours, we don't need to fetch it from Riot again. Basically, if I've looked at my user within the past day, don't waste my time, don't look at Riot. Let's just pull it straight from the database. Uh, now yesterday's dot set date uh, needs to be yesterday dot get date minus one, so basically go back a day. And then we're gonna create a query for the database. And for Riot, our query is looking at the name and the region. And because we wanna also check to make sure that it's been within the past 24 hours, let's add a last modified field. And we're gonna do something funky with this. We're actually gonna do something funky with all three of these. We're gonna use regular expressions for the name and region. What we're doing here is we're actually creating a regular expression to just make sure we're only looking at uh, case insensitive queries for summoner name and region. The reason I say that is because Riot doesn't care whether or not you are capital letters or lowercase letters or funky letters across the board. If I'm, if I'm making my request here and I decide to capitalize the G, I'm gonna get the same exact response from Riot as I did without that capitalized G. So something important to note is the capitalization here shouldn't matter. So we're gonna go ahead and take a regular expression and convert this to lowercase or case insensitive is what this I means on the summer name. So we're looking for a summoner name that matches this string exactly. So starts, then there's the summoner name variable, then ends, that's what these, these characters mean. So starts, ends, and then case insensitive. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the um, region, only we're gonna obviously put the region variable in that regular expression. And then last modified, this is actually a comparison operator we wanna do within um, MongoDB. So we're gonna do, this is kind of a funky um, mnemonic, but it stands for greater than or equal to yesterday. So what we're saying here is the name has to match summoner name, which is our input to this method, uh, well, that's case insensitive. The region has to match the region, case insensitive. And the last modified field has to be greater than or equal to yesterday, meaning it has to be today or within the past 24 hours. Then we also want to define something called our find options. Uh, this is something that's kind of funky with MongoDB, but every time you insert something into MongoDB, it also defines a field called underscore ID. That's the document ID. We probably don't want to see that on our data, on our response. Just probably going to confuse people. So we're going to do something called, we're going to add a projection. And that what that does is says, we're going to project our response with the ID of false, meaning we don't want to include that underscore ID field. And now we're going to define something called a summoner document. The reason why we do let summoner doc first is because we're going to want to return this eventually. So rather than return response.data, let's return summoner doc. We want to define it beforehand because we might want to overwrite it later on when we actually pull data from Riot. So we're going to do db.collection of summoners. This collection doesn't exist yet, but it will eventually. And we're going to find one where it matches our query. And we want to apply our find options, which would just be get rid of that ID field. An error does not occur if we don't find the document. It's only if we can't connect to the database. Let's just store the error for now. And now at this point, if summoner document exists, then we got the summoner. So in other words, there was already data in the database. So just return it. Don't actually call Riot. We don't need to do an else because we would have returned before that else. So we can just write the rest of the code for in the event that we didn't find the summoner document. So all code after this line is a case where summoner doc was not in MongoDB. Something important to note is we could have had a summoner document that was older than 24 hours, but it didn't return here because our query explicitly said that that last modified field needed to be within the past 24 hours. So I'm going to do something funky here. We're actually going to delete query.lastModified. And you'll understand why we do that in just a second, so don't worry too much. But now let's go ahead and create a response. Let response. And um, we can then go ahead and do the exact same thing. 
we're going to do best practice. We're going to put this within a try loop. So actually, I can probably just leave that, right? Try. It's not a try loop. It's a try catch thing. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with uh, what that's actually called. And throw error. What this is doing is now we're saying, okay, try to get the data from Riot. If we can't, throw an error. And if we get a response, we now know that rest.data contains our summoner data. But we want to write that in the database before we uh, before we return it back to our user. So we're going to create a, a doc update equals, we're going to define the set value as our response.data. And we're also going to define current data or current date. Uh, our last modified date. So what this is going to say is we're going to set the values in a document to response.data and then we're also going to additionally set the last modified date to the current date. Then we're saying constant update options equals and we're going to do something called an upsert. What this does is it says if the va if the document already exists, update it, otherwise insert. So this allows us to kind of accomplish two scenarios. If, if this is the first time we're adding this data to the document database, we're going to insert it. We're going to create the document. But if we've already done this before and the document already matches our query from above, then let's update it. And that's why we've deleted the last modified. Because now, if it's a stale document, if last modified is older than 24 hours, then we still want to overwrite it where the name and region are the same. Now we're going to just await we're going to wait for our document uh, database to be updated. Dot update one. And we're going to have our query, which no longer has last modified in it. We're going to update it with our doc update. And then we're going to include our update options, which is what's telling it to be an upsert. Then we could technically just return the data now, but because we've got current data attached to that document and that's happening on MongoDB, I'm just gonna request it one more time. And we technically could put this within a try loop, a try catch. What is that called? If you know what that's called, it's not a try catch loop, it's a just try catch. Uh, but we'll just do this throw error. And then we can just return that summoner doc when we're done. So there are actually two things I forgot. One was that I didn't set these quotes up properly. They should be back ticks and not just single quotes. Reason being because we're using this particular syntax where we're inserting the summer name directly into the query. Number two would be that even though we have region as a part of our query here, we're not actually putting it in the document. I look at the document database and I have name, but I don't have region. So uh, down here, our response.data that we get from Riot, we actually should just add response.data.region equals request or equals region. Reason being, if we don't do that, it won't be included in the set and it won't work. So let's go ahead and just purge our database again. And now we're going to run this again. The first time we request, it should take 400 milliseconds from Riot. We get all this grand data, but the next time we run it, it'll run in five milliseconds because it's fetching directly from the database. In the next video, we're going to look at turning this into a middleware component so that we can use the data response from here and then continue to add to that data before we send it back to our user. I want to highlight a potential issue with this GetDB strategy, and that's around race conditions with creating multiple connections in the MongoDB client. To highlight this issue, I'm going to add a console uh, log for connecting the database. So if I start this and I run this API call, you notice it only connects to the database once. It only goes through this if construct once. However, it is possible for that to happen multiple times. Uh, in, for example, if two people were to call this exact API endpoint immediately, so they both started this call at the exact same time or fairly close to each other, then they would both kick off these asynchronous methods or asynchronous functions, and they would both call get DB potentially at the same time. And if those both get called at the same time, the DB could be an undefined value at the same time, and then you could end up having two connections created to MongoDB. And it's not the end of the world. At the end of the day, DB is still only going to be assigned to one of them, and you're going to only have one connection uh, defined. The other one will probably end up getting, connect getting collected by the garbage collector and uh, deleted over time, but relying on the garbage collector is kind of a bad practice. So let's talk about how we can resolve this. But first, let's, let's show the actual issue, because I guess you're probably interested in that. So to force this, we're going to say get DB in our index.js file, and we're going to require dbs slash write mongo client and we're just going to call get db as quickly one after the other as we possibly can two lines right and now if we call node 
Node.js and it's connecting to DB twice. And that's because these are asynchronous methods. And those asynchronous methods are not, they don't have DB defined at the beginning of either of them. Even though one got called first, it's not waiting for this one to finish before moving on to the next one because we can't await in a synchronous function like this or a synchronous file. And so we end up having double connections, bad. There's a couple ways we can we can fix this. The primary way that a lot of people would think is, well, let's just put a mutex lock. You can only connect to the DB if the mutex lock is unlocked. That's gonna probably add a lot of complexity. What we could also do is we could actually just chain the promise from get DB onto our app.listen. And so what this means is that our app would not be able to expose itself on the port until we've at least gotten the DB connection once. This serves two good things. One, it ensures that we're not trying to run our app without a connection to the backend database ever. So it has to be able to connect to the backend database before we can even run the app. And two, it ensures that we're not gonna run into that race condition as long as we're not trying to chain multiple get DB calls before we hit this point. So now, if we've already hit this point and we've already exposed the app, I can call get DB a bunch of times for the first time, or I guess it wouldn't be for the first time, but I can call get DB a bunch of times asynchronously and it's not gonna have that race condition anymore. It's only gonna connect to it once and that connection to it once happens here in our index.js. So now if I run it, we're not connected to DB anymore. Perfect.